Good morning. It's, uh, what is today? Today is Monday, October the 4th, 2010. I'm in, I'm in Hope, New Jersey. At our little home out here. And uh, it's been a week or more since I was able to read the paper and comment on it. Uh, in case you're in New York this week, I will be appearing at uh, Smalls on Monday night, the 11th. I will be appearing at uh, Shanghai Jazz on Sunday night, the 10th. Smalls uh, on the 11th and on the 13th at Smalls. So those are some performances you might want to catch if you're in, uh, in the neighborhood. If you come to New York and you want to discuss any of these matters with me, come there. Right during the set, we'll talk about it. There's a lot of great stuff in today's paper, Monday morning. October 4, one of which articles really interests me, is about how um, mortgages, how banks in the attempt to foreclose on mortgages are overlooking and cheating and passing up the proper paperwork. They are failing to do their paperwork properly, and therefore I suspect many mortgage foreclosures are going to be negated because nobody did the proper paperwork when everybody was taking mortgages and splitting them up into 15 little what they call tranches. Uh, I don't know how they did it, but computers I guess can do that. So therefore, when the homeowner stops paying his mortgage because he can't afford it anymore uh, and the bank forecloses, the original bank, I suppose, forecloses who sold the mortgage to these other people. I don't know who and nobody knows who, how the paperwork goes and it's too complicated and I suspect that one of the results is that many people who have gone through foreclosures will get back into their homes if they wish and that the ownership will never be figured out on these things. And I suspect it could be very chaotic. So let me just uh, read you the article from today's Times because I think it's important that you uh, that we follow this. You gotta love it. Banks flawed a paperwork throws some foreclosures into chaos, and it talks about uh, signatures. And it gives an example of three signatures by a woman named, by the name of Tawana Thomas. And these are three signatures that are attributed to be hers. Signature one, signature two, and signature three. All of them supposedly by the same person, all of them radically different. So that's the kind of stuff that's going on in the mortgage foreclosure world. And I've always, we've always known that when you get, in this culture, when you get greedy or get just hungry corporations, I don't even need the word greedy, but hungry, profit hungry corporations, they'll do anything. I, I just realized this morning that the, that the corporate world and the rich people just see the government as a competitor. And that's why they want low, all they want is lower taxes. Just want lower taxes. They want more money for themselves, they want to grow their business, and they want lower taxes. And that's why they support the Tea Party, because they're giving, I mean, the, the, the people behind the Tea Party are, are very, very rich. They're not the average Joes that you hear about in, in, in Tea Party press blurbs and stuff like that. The money's not coming from poor people. It's coming from hugely rich people. And uh, this is being proven, and or at least is being testified to, and backed up by articles and nobody's denying it. Nobody's denying it that some very, very wealthy people are behind the Tea Party. Why? Because they expect to get these candidates in there who uh, represent them and will have cut taxes. That's all. They just want to cut taxes. Um, they don't want to spend money on, they really don't want to spend money on Medicare. They don't want to spend money on Social Security. They don't want to spend money, all they want is spend money on guns and let the rest of us just go to hell. Uh, because it's their company that's being affected by these taxes. And who's going to pay, who's going to pay the major burden of the taxes? The very people 
who are in the Tea Party. They're going to, the, the, the middle class people are going to be the ones burdened with the highest rate of tax. All the super rich are going to have their taxes cut and they're going to stay cut because the Tea Party will see to it. It's kind of crazy, but that's the way, that's the way it works. And uh, there, a lot of these people are going to get in. I like Christine McDonald of McDonald. I like Christine McDonald of Delaware. I mean, she's a perfect example. It wasn't there a party called the Know Nothings at one point? Well, I think the Know Nothings are coming back. As some of the nation's largest lenders have conceded that their foreclosure procedures might have been improperly handled, lawsuits have revealed myriad missteps in crucial documents. Oh, my. The flawed practices that GMAC Mortgage, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Bank of America have recently begun investigating are so prevalent, lawyers and legal experts say, that additional lenders and loan services are likely to halt foreclosure proceedings and may just have to reconsider past evictions. Oh, dear. So all you people who got evicted, hang on for a second, because you may be back in business. If you want to be, you probably don't want to be. You probably settled something else now. Who wants to go back to that old house? So therefore, what it means is that the, when they try to sell them, they won't be able to sell them because nobody will be able to prove who owns the title or who's what. Very, very messy. I can see houses being destroyed right now to solve this problem, just leveled. Problems emerging in courts across the nation are varied, but all involve documents that must be submitted before foreclosures can proceed legally. <laughs> Homeowners, lawyers, and analysts have been citing such problems for the last few years. And I have too. Well, of course, I've just been reading and paying attention to it. But it appears to have reached such intensity recently that banks are beginning to re-examine whether all of the foreclosure papers were prepared properly. Prepared properly. Are you prepared properly? Must be prepared properly. Prepared properly. Prepared properly. Let's say that. Prepared properly. In some cases... Documents have been signed by employees who say they have not verified crucial information like amounts owed by borrowers. Really? So they sue them and they just put some kind of figure on there and they don't know really if it's the proper amount. Uh oh, that's not good. Other problems involve questionable legal notarization of documents, in which, for example, the notarizations predate the actual preparation of the documents. Oh. Uh, suggesting that signatures were never actually reviewed by a notary. In other words, somebody notarized something before the document was actually prepared. And that's not, see, that's not how a notary is supposed to work. He's supposed to look at it, and he's supposed to say, are you the person who signed this? Yes, and is you? And boom, okay, and prove it. But in this case, the notaries stamped the papers before the papers were even prepared. I always thought the notary business was pretty flimsy, capable of great skullduggery. Skullduggery, skullduggery. I don't know how to pronounce that. Perhaps I'll have to look that up. Skullduggery, skullduggery. I just went to pronunciation.com and they say it's skullduggery. Skullduggery. The G is hard. Skullduggery. Anyway, in Balmer, we said skullduggery, if we said it at all. Other problems occurred when notarizations took place so far from where the documents were signed that it was highly unlikely that the notaries witnessed the signings as the law requires. Yes, that could happen. Tawana Thomas. The three very signatures for Tawana Thomas. Slightly, radically different from each other. Okay. Let's hear from Tawana Thomas. Let's see what she has to say. Additional problems have emerged when multiple banks have all argued that they have the right to foreclose on the same property Result of a murky trail of documentation and ownership. That's it. Splitting the ownership up into what they call tranches. This, we may have to look up what a tranche is. And, um, and then the ownership gets split into seven, nine different banks, and people buy it, and it gets, it's owned by a, a village in Germany before you know it. And who put all their money into these wonderful American bonds and then or, or mortgages and investments that go rotten and we owe the world. 
that's really what the bailout was about, I think, was because we could not begin to afford to, to shortchange the world, to screw the world out of all that money because we sold a lot of mortgages overseas and they simply, we simply had to put our money behind it. And that really, in my opinion, was the re reason the mortgage bailout, the bank bailout was worth it, even though the bank was, you know, just literally robbed the American people with rotten investments taking their commissions and running. That's what I think. That's what I think is it's because we had just too many uh, people around the world who would have made life very, very difficult for us, including probably the Chinese. I don't know if we didn't, if we let those uh, investments go bad. That's what I think. There is no doubt that the enormous increase in foreclosures in recent years has strained the resources of lenders and their legal representatives, creating challenges that any institution might find overwhelming. According to the Mortgage Bankers Association, the percentage of loans that were delinquent by 90 days or more stood at 9.5% in the first quarter of 2010, up from 4% in the same period of 2008. So, mortgages have gone up. mortgage foreclosures have gone up 5%. 5.5% here in the big recovery we're enjoying. Ooh, some recovery. But analysts say that the wave of defaults still does not excuse, excuse me, still does not excuse, but analysts say the wave of defaults still does not excuse, but analysts say the wave of defaults still does not excuse, 21, still does not, I guess I'll get it wrong. A12, not 21, A12. <sighs> but analysts say that the wave of defaults still does not excuse. Here, here it is. Still does not excuse money in their coffers. That doesn't make any sense. A12, A12. Analysts say that money in their coffers still does not excuse lenders' failures to meet their legal obligations before trying to remove defaulting borrowers from their homes. But analysts say, this is important, but analysts say that the wave of defaults still does not excuse lenders' failures to meet their legal obligations before trying to remove defaulting borrowers from their homes. But analysts say that the wave of defaults still does not excuse lenders, the banks, failures to meet their legal obligations before trying to remove defaulting borrowers from their homes. Which means that even though the banks were being defaulted on, they still have to meet their legal obligations. I mean, that makes sense. It reflects the hubris that as long as the money was going through the pipeline, these companies didn't really have to make sure the documents were in order. Hubris. That's a good word. Let's look up hubris. It reflects the hubris that as long as the money was going through the pipeline, these companies didn't really have to make sure the documents were in order, said Kathleen C. Engel, Dean for Intellectual Life at Suffolk University Law School, and an expert in mortgage law. Suddenly they have a lot at stake and playing fast and loose is going to be more...